In this video, we're going to cover some of my highlights from this month's Power BI feature update, including things like improvements to the dataset hub, new additions to the Azure maps, and improvements to how you interact with goals. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the first one that we'll cover today is the new format pane. It's been in preview for a couple of months, but starting from May onwards, it will be generally available. That means you can't choose to see the old version anymore from the preview settings, which is what I think is a shame uh, because I'm not really a fan of this new format pane. However, I think it's a good opportunity now to get started and to get used to this new format. Error bars can now be added to your line charts to show uncertainties in your data. It's a feature you sometimes see when you're using features like forecasting in Power BI, where you're showing a range of possible values, so having the upper bound and the lower bound. And it's not uncommon for data to have this kind of uncertainty. This is coming out as a preview feature. So if you want to start using it, you need to make sure that you enable it from the preview options. You'll then find the option of the error bars in your line chart visual under the analytics tab, same as where you create your trend lines and forecast lines. You can create measures to set the upper bounds and lower bounds here. And you can also control how it's related to your measures, either it's absolute or relative to that data. You can choose to show your error bars as either a bar, markers, or a shade areas, which is probably what you'll be most familiar to see. When you use error bars with your line charts, you'll also be able to preview them and their boundaries on the tooltip when you hover over any data points in your line chart. Dynamic format strings are now supported for all chart elements in this update. To be honest, I don't tend to use this feature often. I know it's to do with being able to decide or define data formats dynamically, adding comma separators for thousands or even decimal points. However, now if you're using this feature, it's now supported on categorical visuals, so there's that. Azure Maps now support geocoding, which is a feature in some of the default apps that auto-translates fields like countries and city names into coordinates in a map. You simply just drop those fields in the location well, and Power BI, or at least Azure Maps, will try to figure out what you mean. You can now add pie charts into Azure Maps by adding a field into your legend well. I'm not a fan of pie chart, to be honest, especially how to visualize categories that are more than a couple of categories, like in this example. But it's a good option if you want to show quickly how the distribution of data is across different geographical areas. A limit has been removed for ports that are more than two gigabytes in size and using sensitivity labels. Apparently any reports before above this limit won't be able to save if it's using sensitivity labels, but now that has been removed. I don't think I've ever worked with any data sets uh, in Power BI that have been over two gigabytes big, but anyway, it's a great job to see that there is a limit and it's now gone. Some new improvements have been applied to the data sets hub. You now have tabs that organizes different data sets across your organization. You have the all, which lists out all the data sets that you have opened recently, the my data sets, tab includes all the data sets that you own or an owner of and trusted in your organization is a new one. It will show you all the data sets that are endorsed, certified or promoted across your organization. You can now set custom statuses using Power BI goals. So before you had a choice of between four to five statuses, which can set the status of a goal either manually or tied to certain conditions. Now you'll find the statuses option when you edit the scorecard, which will allow you to build way more customized statuses and even customize their colors. 
Creating goals is pretty easy as I found when I started covering this feature, so I highly recommend to start using it just to get used to it, even if you don't have data to work with. And if you want to get a rundown on how to get started with goals in Power BI, I actually have a video recently covering it as a quick start guide, so check it out if you haven't yet. Goal owners typically receive notifications via Teams when certain goals get updated. There are a few new different notifications added to goals in this month. Goal owners now get an update if one of the goals that they own gets updated. So changing anything like the names, dates, adding or removing owners, or even changing statuses will notify the data owners of what's been done. Another notification that's been added notifies you when a check-in has been made in a goal. So this is when a value has been updated in your goal, either added in using the linked uh, feature or using the check-in feature in goals. Another great addition in this month's feature updates is the ability to quickly visualize documentation libraries, similar to how you can do with SharePoint lists. If you use SharePoint sites or SharePoint online in any capacity, like say SharePoint lists, you will have this ability to integrate or generate Power BI reports to visualize the makeup of that list. Now this feature is also available for document libraries, which is a lot more widely used than lists, I would say. And I recognize this feature as a great way to showcase Power BI without having to create or knowing how to create your own one focusing on getting insights really quickly. And that's really it for my highlights for this month's updates. As usual, I didn't cover the full list of updates, only the ones that I found interesting. However, if you're interested in the full list of updates for this month, I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can go check out the blog post yourself. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.